Welcome back to Better Than a Pill. Today, I am so excited to have Prajada Apte with us. And Prajada is a lot of things. She's a registered dietitian. She's a yoga teacher and a gut health specialist and expert. And today, we're going to be talking all about detoxing. So welcome, Prajada. Thank you so much, Carrie. It's a pleasure to be here on your podcast. I'm I'm so excited. Oh, well, I'm so excited to, to finally get you on as well. And, <laughs> you know, I just want to like start off a little bit by sharing a little bit about your story and how you got involved in doing the work that you're doing now. Sure. So, um, uh... I, uh, you have already introduced me. I'm a registered dietitian and I started my career working as a dietitian about 20 years back. And I started working in a local hospital as a uh, clinical dietitian. And I got really good experience there, um, learned a lot, uh, worked with different, uh, you know, types of uh, disease conditions that people have it. But then eventually I started to realize that I was not getting a kind of satisfaction out of this work because uh, people admitting in the hospital, they were more worried and concerned about the current problem that they are dealing with. And nutrition or diet used to be uh, kind of a less priority at that time on the, on for those people, which is understandable because they were in pain, they were just recovering out of surgery, uh, they had some infection that they are dealing with, so their focus was different. And that's where I started to think that probably I need to uh, slowly get out of this hospital environment and start something on my own where people... Um, are more motivated, they are uh, ready to, uh, you know, make changes in their diet and lifestyle. And that's how I ended up uh, starting my own practice called Right Nutrition Works. And I have been in my private practice for last 12 years almost, and it's been going good. Uh, I am my own boss, of course, and then I really can work with people who are motivated and uh, who are ready to make the change and uh, they they want something new and positive in their uh, in their health to happen so uh, it's really a pleasure to work with those type of people uh, now getting into the gut health that is a little bit of a story here and uh, I'm gonna make my long story short, but uh, my husband had some gut issues uh, back in 2016, I believe. And he was dealing with some uh, problems, which uh, doctors were saying that, oh, this is normal. Uh, you know, bloating just comes and goes on its own. And you don't really need to worry so much. Uh, all his labs were coming so-called normal. And uh, he was not able to find any answers to his uh, problems. And um, that's when we found a functional medicine doctor who definitely guided uh, my husband and, of course, me as a caregiver and uh, really helped him come out of what he was dealing. And that's where uh, I realized that how important it is for everybody to keep our gut healthy and strong because it is a foundation for our overall health and well-being and that's how I started doing more research and you know did some certification courses to kind of gain more knowledge um, and that's how I I am now looking or, or working with people uh, with different kinds of gut issues and I help them uh, feel better fix their gut through the healing power of nutrition and healthy lifestyle modifications. Wow, that's so good. And mm -hmm. it, I'm just going to guess that detoxing is a part of what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Because the uh, gut health and uh, detox, they kind of go hand in hand. When someone is dealing with uh, gut problems, they normally have uh, excess toxin overload in their body. And uh, that could be through various sources. But 
removing the toxins from uh, their body or stimulating their natural detoxification pathways definitely help improve their gut health. And that's how I kind of work with both. And I really enjoy what I do. I see. And so basically, detoxing is getting rid of of the toxins. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. So you can you can think of it this way. Detox is detoxing is uh, like giving your body a little spa day uh, from inside. And it's the way to help your body get rid of the stuff it doesn't need. And uh, that is kind of clearing out the um, clutter from your house. So inside our body, we have different organs like kidneys and liver and digestive system or even lymphatic system, which actually uh, help with the detoxification. And they are working constant to keep our body's toxic burden under control. They work very hard. They break down the toxins. They remove the toxins uh, from our body. But um, sometimes what happens is if we have the excess toxic load or what we call it as toxic burden, Of course, these pathways, they become sluggish and they do not function as efficiently as they should be. And that's where um, your body needs a little bit of external help. And that external help is basically detox. I see. Mm -hmm. And that totally is a great explanation. That that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. so detoxing, is that something that it, that we all should be doing or, you know, do we have to get to the point where we're, our pathways are clogged and then that's when we need to do it? Correct. Again, I mean, if you're going to ask this question to 10 different people, you're going to get 10 different answers. I am going to tell you what I think and what is my personal take on this. But uh, I feel that uh, in today's world, we are surrounded by toxins. We have a very busy lifestyle. There is a lot of stress that we all deal with on a on a daily basis and stress of all kinds. Um, there is a lot of uh, difference as compared to few years back in our eating habits. We are more and more relying on uh, processed foods, uh, easy to grab and go type of things, uh, the foods that require minimum cooking. Uh, We eat out a lot as compared to if we compare, you know, our earlier generations. So all these things are contributing factors to our uh, toxic burden. So my take on this is you don't you don't want to wait until those pathways or those natural detoxification systems get clogged up in your body because that's when you will start to notice symptoms like you know feeling tired or sluggish or headache or migraine or digestive symptoms like bloating or constipation is a very common symptom so you don't need to wait until you start to experience these symptoms but it is definitely a good idea to uh, do your detox every quarter that's what my suggestion is or whenever you feel that you need a little extra boost in your health but at the same time it is important to remember that it is essential to do detox in a healthy way and this means focusing on nutrient dense nutrient rich foods staying well hydrated rather than any kind of extreme diets or fasting yeah and that's and so I'd love to learn a little more because it, it, so what exactly do you need to do when you detox how long should it last and you know in my mind I'm envisioning this we're drinking only a liquid and so when you just said food now I'm thinking okay so it's different than what I think it is <laughs> Yes. Uh, So again, I mean, uh, you will get different opinions if you ask different people. But uh, in my opinion, any kind of uh, juicing or excessive uh, fasting for, you know, so many days, that is not the uh, right way of detoxing. Detoxing can involve whole nutritious foods. Juicing is actually bad in my opinion because it can 
actually hurt and harm your body by adding more toxic burden in your body. So you can support your body's natural detox uh, processes with balanced diet. And definitely uh, eating foods in its most natural form, trying to stay away from common um, allergens such as dairy, such as gluten, of course, added sugar, uh, soy products, those are the things you want to completely stay away from because those can cause more toxic burden in your body. So try to stay away from those. Um, the detox uh, can be done anywhere between, in my opinion, five days up to, you know, kind of 14 days, two weeks. Um, I generally run a detox challenge for my clients every quarter and um, I just do that for five days. And, uh, you know, there are so many people come back to me saying that even in five days, uh, what amazing changes that they notice and all the positive changes that they observe that happen uh, in their body and mind just by making uh, changes for five days. Wow. And so during this detox challenge, mm -hmm. um, is it kind of broken down what you would need to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in like snacks kind of correct, situation? Correct. So again, I mean, everybody will uh, be having different experience in the sense of I'm talking more from whoever is offering. I offer my clients uh, like a structured plan for five days. I give them different recipes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks. Uh, I have a... Uh, Facebook group that I create and uh, we kind of support and motivate each other. And along with my clients, even I do detoxing because uh, when you do this in a group, you get that different kind of energy. And uh, it's just fun to do it in a group because everybody is uh, in the same boat, right? So uh, that's what I do. But I feel that you need to be giving a lot of support when someone is doing detox because person shouldn't be feeling lost as to, okay, you are telling me to do a uh, whole food-based detox, but what does that mean? What should I be doing? What should I be eating? Uh, should I be uh, drinking, uh, you know, coffee versus no coffee? You know, all those things, people have tons and tons of questions. So right type of framework and structure and guidance is very, very important. Yeah, that totally makes sense. And because uh, I could see um, how you could really harm your body. And, yeah. I, I, you know, wondering that because, yeah, I mean, totally, that makes sense. You, if you, and especially too, if you're taking into account somebody that may have other things going on medically. Correct. Right. Absolutely. Or, you know, there are a lot of detox products and supplements out there. And unfortunately, they are always not safe and effective, even if they the companies are advertising that they are effective. But I have also seen a lot of side effects and negative impact on your body by doing those supplements. Um, I do sometimes recommend supplement, but those are all herbal and natural. But my goal is to do it more from a with a natural uh, foods and making some lifestyle modifications because uh, all detox supplements and products are not created equal and some could be really potentially harmful and they could be completely ineffective. So it is really important to do your research or even consult a healthcare professional before trying any of those detox products. Uh, and they can they can definitely help you to kind of you know guide you in the right direction whether they are safe and they are the effective options right mm -hmm. and so you know what are actually some potential risk or or things that could happen or 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 dangers of somebody that's you know detoxing you know absolutely that's that's very very um important to be aware of the potential risk with detoxing and uh, when i say potential risk with wrong type of detoxing. If you are going to stick to more natural ways, which is what your body accepts, you are in good, uh, you know, kind of good hands there. But if not, then potential uh, 
side effects or risks that are associated are nutrient deficiency. Uh, so if you go on an extreme detox that restricts a uh, lot of important foods from your diet, including protein sometimes, or uh, you go on just juicing for uh, 10 days, 14 days, then you definitely are going to miss on essential nutrients. And this can lead to deficiencies which aren't good for your health because your body will have to really, really work hard. And it could be like a long uh, game to get all those nutrient levels back to normal range. So nutrient deficiency is what I have commonly seen. I have also seen people, uh, they get dehydrated. And uh, some detox plans, they encourage a lot of fluid intake, but too much of good thing can also be bad right? So mm -hmm. overdoing, overdoing with any liquids can sometimes even lead to dehydration and which could be serious. And plus on top of that, uh, with only juicing or only liquids, you're not getting enough, enough nutrients too. You're not getting any balanced nutrition. So for all those five, seven, 10, 15 days, whatever you're doing, your body gets uh, really, really uh, deficient in important nutrients. That's another uh, side effect or potential risk. Um, I have also seen that uh, medication interaction. So if you are on certain types of medications, especially for chronic conditions, certain detox methods can interfere with them. So it is always a good idea to consult your healthcare provider before you start any detox program, especially I've seen people uh, buying detox programs and detox kits randomly from, from uh, websites uh, online. So it is definitely a good idea to do your research. And if you're not sure, just check with your uh, healthcare provider because they will be able to guide you in a better way. And mm -hmm. um, I feel that the lack of long-term benefits, so some detox plans, they promise big results, but they might not provide you the lasting benefits. You will see some changes, good changes happening, some benefits that you experience while you are in that process of detoxing. So um, it is actually, in my opinion, better to focus on more sustainable and long-term results. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. We need to hear that. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah, because I feel that in any case, moderation is the key, and it's always to uh, always best or a good idea to consult with the healthcare professional or even registered dietitian uh, before making any drastic and significant changes to your diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well said. And so, how about how do the the kidneys and the liver and some of the other organs actually help with the body's natural detoxing process? Absolutely. So um, I'm going to uh, talk about the important detoxification organs or systems in our body. So I'm going to start with liver because liver is the hub of detoxification. Okay. It's in charge of uh, breaking down the toxins, turning them into actually water soluble, less harmful substances, and then getting them ready to be removed from your body. So it's like recycling center for your body. Okay. So liver is very, very important. And um, I'm not going to go too much into clinical and in depth, but there are two phases that are involved in liver detoxification, phase one and phase two. And of course, phase one requires certain nutrients from your diet. Uh, and phase two requires some additional nutrients from your diet. So if your diet has those nutrients, then the detox process in your liver becomes very smooth and your liver can work efficiently. But if you are already deficient in some of those nutrients, then liver is going to have a harder time to process those um, toxins and get get them ready to be excreted. So that is why that balanced diet is very, very important. The other thing, other organ is kidneys. And um, kidneys are like your body's natural filters. So uh, they sift through your uh, blood, picking out some waste and some, you know, unwanted substances. And then they turn them into urine. So which is what your body uh 
body's way of saying, okay, I don't need this anymore and I'm going to get rid of it. So uh, basically kidneys will ex excrete the uh, toxins or unwanted substances in the form of urine. So that's how kidneys work. Uh, the third organ that is involved in detoxification are our lungs. And um, yes, our lungs definitely play a part in detoxification. They help to remove toxins in the form of gases when you breathe out. So it's like uh, it's like a breath of fresh air for your body. So that is why... Um, Studies, some studies have shown that actually uh, 60 to 70 percent of detoxification happens if you are doing um, deep belly breathing every day. And that actually is a great way to support your lungs for efficient detoxification. So uh, that's pretty amazing when I when I heard about that. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but I love that. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, um, uh, next organ is skin and skin as we know is the largest organ um, it is like an outer shield and it helps to get rid of the toxins through sweat so when you are exercising you're you're working out and uh, you get a lot of sweat you are actually helping your body uh, in this detox mission because that's where your lymphatic system is working harder to get rid of the toxins in the form of sweating. Um, and the last organ are your intestine, or we can call it as your gut. And these guys are actually in charge of <clears throat> taking care of waste from your uh, digestive system. They absorb all the good stuff and make sure that the waste gets out and it's like a it's like a conveyor belt actually for uh, what your body doesn't need so uh, pooping every day okay and not dealing with constipation is extremely important because if you are dealing with constipation if you are not going to the bathroom all seven days a week if you are not pooping enough uh, you're basically holding on to all those toxins inside your body. So uh, having a good, healthy bowel movement every single day um, of the week is very, very important. And that shows that your um, gut or your intestines are working uh, fantastic in uh, detoxification process. Right. Oh, that's, mm -hmm. that's very helpful. And, you know, if somebody is, let's say, on a detox and they're not um, eating certain foods, they're staying away from things like gluten or dairy or, or you know, things that could cause problems. What's the difference between that and then just eating that way permanently? So uh, obviously, I mean, uh, gluten and dairy, and there are a few other uh, foods such as soy or added sugar. These are all considered as uh, commonly identified allergens and those allergens definitely build your toxic burden. They kind of, uh, you know, they don't help your natural detoxification systems of your body to do their job efficiently. And that's why it is highly recommended to stay away from these foods while you're detoxing, because that's the way you're supporting the natural uh, processes and natural detoxification systems in your body. So that is the main purpose. Now, some people will be putting those foods back into their diet, which is totally fine. And um, after detox is done, you can slowly introduce one food at a time to see how your body is reacting. Some people even may realize that when they start to reintroduce foods back into their diet, they start to notice some of the symptoms are coming back. And that's an indication, in my opinion, that you're probably sensitive to those foods and you definitely then want to stay away from it because if you keep eating those foods, definitely you're going to be experiencing some symptoms. And number two, it is slowly increasing your toxic burden. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And if somebody, let's say, wants to lose weight, um, how how does detox possibly help with that? Okay. So the uh, first thing what um, I would like to say here is... Uh, Doing a detox, even if you are doing it in a correct way, uh, it is not a long-term solution for weight loss. Of course, some people 
will experience weight loss while they are detoxing, which is good. Uh, but you want to make sure that the weight that you are losing is uh, either the toxin or inflammation related weight. You're, you may lose some body water, which is normal. But the wrong type of detox programs, uh, people will be losing actually muscles, especially um, programs that are uh, that only focus on juicing or only focus on liquids. Uh, those will actually, uh, you know, you will waste the muscles and that's how you will lose weight, which is definitely not a good thing. So uh, weight loss. Uh, from detoxing is usually, in my opinion, temporary, which means while you are on, fo you are following a detox program, you will lose weight. But in my opinion, uh, it is not a long term solution. After detox program is over, if um, one go back to their regular eating habits, some of the weight may come back. But what I feel is if you are going to continue eating healthy and continue with those good uh, eating habits and lifestyle modifications, the weight that you will gain back, that weight will be probably the muscle weight and not the body fat weight or not the inflammation weight. So um, even in between the detox programs, for, lot, for all of us, I feel that the goal should be to try to eat healthy as much as you can and try to stay away from the uh, bad foods, processed foods, foods with added colors and, you know, additives and preservatives, try to stay away from those or at least minimize those. Right. That makes mm -hmm. sense. And so looking at ways to actually help nourish your body. Correct. Exactly. Because, um, it is not, I mean, detoxing is not the best strategy for long lasting weight management. For some people, the root cause for their weight gain or weight challenges is their gut health and their gut health is not balanced. It's not strong. Uh, there is some problem there and that's the reason they are noticing uh, weight challenges. So the whatever is the root cause, that needs to be fixed. Detox definitely helps, but it is more of a supportive strategy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what about stress? How does that affect the body's ability to detoxify? And, and what can things like, 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 let's say mindfulness or stress management techniques, how can they help? Sure. Yeah. So stress can be like a speed bump in your body's detox process. Uh, when you are stressed, your body uh, focuses on dealing with that stressor, right? And sometimes that can slow down detoxification process. It is like your uh, body's resources, they get diverted. Now, mindfulness and stress management practices help calm down your nervous system, which lets your body get back to its regular detox job. So when you practice mindfulness, like, you know, deep belly breathing, or it could be meditation, or it could be yoga, it's like telling your body, it is okay, you can take a breather, it is fine. And this helps your uh, detoxification organs, especially your liver and your kidneys, do their detox more efficiently. So mm. reducing stress through through the uh, mindfulness and other techniques is a powerful way to support your body's natural detox process. And it's like giving your body a clear path to do its job more effectively. Right. Mm -hmm. And so as you were talking, it came to my mind is what about, let's just say, we know stress, there's so many forms we could have, like, let's say the emotional stress or, you know, whatever could be going on. But what about like physical stress? And I mean, like in the form of like just basic exercise, is that something that you should avoid? Let's say like, for example, walking or weightlifting, like during a detox? Um, okay, so again, my take on this is uh, you, while you are in the detox program, whether that is five days, 10 days, whatever it is, um, assuming that it's a good way of detoxing and good, good detox program, um, 
you can continue with exercise, but I generally uh, tell my clients not to do too much of weightlifting. You can do bike ride, you can do uh, yoga, you can do walking, you can even go for a jog, but anything that is too intense and uh, lifting probably should be avoided. Okay, that's very helpful to know too. Mm -hmm. That And that makes sense because that would be too much of a stressor. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Prajada. This has been wonderful. You've just been a wealth of knowledge. And I know everybody has benefited from this today. I know I have. So, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I, it was a pleasure. And I really enjoyed talking about this topic. That's my one of my favorites. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So for for everybody that's listening today, if you would like to learn more about Prajada's work, I have included the link to her website, um, which is rightnutritionworks.com in this episode, as well as she has created a guide and it is called Fix Your Gut. And um, I'll let her explain a little bit more about, about that. <laughs> Sure. So um, it is a guide that uh, you can download and it's a free download. Um, the name of the guide is Fix Your Gut. Basically, uh, the uh, guide will explain you um, and give you the complete framework and step-by-step -step instructions on um, how to fix your gut, uh, how to fix your gut through the healing power of nutrition and lifestyle modifications. I have also included my um, secret four-hour program or a protocol, you can call it as, as uh, how you can follow that protocol and see a difference uh, with, you know, balancing your um, good microbes and your bad microbes. And once you create that balance, you will have a stronger gut health, which, as I said before, is a foundation for our overall health uh, health and well-being. And we all need to have this foundation very, very strong. Great. And thank you so much for that, Guy. That sounds awesome. So... <laughs> Remember, everyone, we do new episodes every week on Wednesday, and I look forward to having you join me then.